So, uh, good evening to all and greetings to all our attendee friends who've signed in from across the globe. Uh, it's a great pleasure and a privilege to welcome each one of you and our speaker for today, Mr. Jose de Souza, the Chief Internal Auditor for JMC Projects India Limited, to the 58th Analytics Wednesday webinar series on continuous auditing with IDEA, our journey. This webinar series brought to you by SAMA Audit Systems and Software's Private Limited is supported by the Government of Canada Trade Commissioner Service. We've had a wonderful run with the Analytics Wednesday webinar series and this being the 58th series, as you know by now, SAMA Audit Systems and Software's Private Limited has been at the forefront of cutting edge tools, technologies, advanced analytics from Caseware, IDEA, Canada. We have uh, Alisa from Tier 1 Financial Solutions, the company's control monitoring solutions, uh, LexComply, which is a legal compliance management system, and very recently, Caseware Working Paper. So we are an end-to-end -end, uh, tool and solutions company for governance risk and compliance professionals. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our learned speaker for this evening, Mr. Rizé de Souza. I'll take a couple of minutes and just formally introduce him. Uh, Rizé is the Chief Internal Auditor at JMC Projects India Limited. Uh, JMC Projects Limited is a very important arm and uh, vertical in the Kalpatru Group. He's been their Chief Internal Auditor since He's been with the Kalpatru Group since July 2012. And prior to that, he worked with KPMG, Lower Gulf, Deloitte Haskins Cells, and SB Billamoria and Company. Rosé is a qualified chartered accountant, a commerce graduate, qualified in 2006. He has over 15 years of experience working with renowned consulting organizations with a significant track record in risk-based internal audit, due diligence, business process review, system reviews, IFC reviews, statutory compliance, formulating and implementing policies, procedures, and working in critical business areas like P2P, O2C, inventory management, review of treasury, export import operations, spanning geographies, industries, business verticals, in industries like EPC, contracting, pharma, real estate, and NBFC audits. So, uh, extensive domain level experience, a career internal auditor, and also someone who I've worked with very closely with regard to data analytics and continuous auditing. And we're going to be hearing from him on his journey, continuous auditing with IDEA. So, Rose, I hand it over to you and uh, you can take the session. Uh, we'll have question and answers towards the end, which I will moderate. Thank you, Rose. Over to you. I'll just make you the host, please. Yeah. Thank you, Jerem. Thanks, Rizal. You're the host. I'll just share. Uh, is the presentation visible? Yes, Rizal. You can move your visible and uh, yes, perfect. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. And I'm uh, audible loud and clear? Loud and clear. Thank you, Rizal. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so first, I'll start off with, uh, you know, thanking Jerem and Sama Audit System. Uh, you guys have always been there at even at short notice whenever we, uh, you know, wanted your help. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, in my session, I'll uh, have a brief uh, overview of, uh, you know, our journey uh, for continuous auditing, uh, especially with IDEA. So uh, uh, I'll start off with uh, a brief introduction about, uh, you know, how we started our journey. And it's an interesting one. You know. So uh, let me go to the first slide. Uh, so uh, here I'd like to highlight a phrase, you know, that necessity is the mother of uh, invention. That is a proverb that fits well to us. And I would rather al also say that it is also a mother of reinvention. You know? So hence the word re there. So uh, we started off our journey in 2011. Uh, we have developed a lot of scripts uh, uh, with, uh, the, you know, idea, caseware, and uh, we built in a lot of uh, models at that time. Uh, but uh, we are talking about 2011 when, uh, particularly in construction and uh, EPC space in our, uh, uh, you know, country, uh, this was, uh, uh, this was like uh, way uh, before time. So 
so it was like we were talking about data analytics where uh, major of the functions or uh, so to say the divisions were not well aware of what data analytics is and we were uh, 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 trying to uh, explain to the functional heads that uh, where the data comes from and how are we getting these kind of observation they were actually startled with uh, you know how the, the auditors were able to find out uh, you know gaps uh, uh, process gaps or uh, maybe configuration issues and uh, the functional uh, heads were not able to do that uh, so uh, at that time in way back in 2011 uh, in our company uh, it was a bit uh, you know ahead of time so we were actually the proponents of uh, data analytics um, so we had faced a lot of problems there and uh, uh, then in 2019 uh, when the work really started the management of uh, jmc projects and our uh, a group as a whole decided that you know digitization was something which uh, which should be the way forward so most of the processes which were uh, you know on a flat file systems or uh, so to say manual work was getting converted into digitized mode and then uh, then came in the pandemic so uh, it was like a wildfire you know so what started off as a small spark uh, of digitization became a wildfire and it was uh, asked uh, and it was asked for everybody to revamp their division totally into digital uh, mode of uh, you know communication so uh, in 2020 and in 2021 uh, most of the departments spent time on uh, you know uh, transforming their entire uh, structure into excel files from excel files to uh, you know, something which was of a digital mode, use of more technology into uh, the various fields. So uh, what happened is that uh, as the departments uh, and the functions, uh, you know, implemented these technologies, uh, what came to internal audit was a big surprise, you know, and the proponents of, uh, digit, of uh, data analytics were uh, suddenly grappling with uh, too many data to churn. So that was the kind of, uh, you know, scenario we are talking about. So, uh, and then we started reinventing our wheel. So all the data analytics, which we had developed earlier were all redundant. So uh, come SAP uh, replacing the earliest, uh, earlier uh, Oracle system, then uh, be it, uh, you know, digitization of the Excel files, then use of technology, uh, GPS uh, uh, for equipments and, uh, uh, the Waybridge uh, uh, systems, uh, then uh, you have these drone cameras. So all those technologies uh, get throwing in a lot of data was a challenging task. So we had to reinvent our and rejig all our, um, you know, uh, data analytics. So I would say that um, um, the pressures started building on internal audit, budgetary pressure, cost pressure, uh, since most of the departments were getting digitized, so they were, uh, you know, okay with uh, uh, their budgets, uh, which they had promised earlier in the earlier years. And suddenly internal audit was, uh, uh, you know, in between uh, these pressures. So uh, uh, cost, uh, availability of qualified personnel, you know, and uh, the, the complexity of the data involved, the scale and the scope of audit procedure suddenly increased because of too much of data. And uh, secondly, the management wanted uh, you know much more uh, uh, from uh, the internal audit department especially uh, with the scale of operations uh, the observations uh, which uh, the internal audit department was focusing on a one particular site so when uh, one observation on uh, one particular location the management would obviously want to know what is the you know implication uh, uh, pan jmc or the pan company level so uh, this was something which the management really was interested and uh, it came no longer with a you know stretch timeline. So uh, within the small uh, span of time, um, uh, the pressures of delivering um, uh, quality work and at the company level was growing. Plus, uh, what uh, we found out is that a lot of repetitive audit work was uh, being done. Uh, as there are pan India about 150 sites uh, working across on all EPC contracts average size of 100 uh, plus crore so uh, a lot of repetitive audit work and audit procedures were going into 
uh, you know these audits uh, management wanted uh, you know us to be more uh, uh, you know um, uh, replacing these repetitive tasks into something which is an audit automated uh, environment so how do we deal with this uh, that was the complex question we already had idea uh, and uh, we tried to uh, work on it earlier also but however uh, uh the um, the need of the hour was to get something really quick so uh, we did the simple uh, uh technique of uh, transforming our audit procedures into an automated uh, environment uh, using idea so we curled out a special task team and we started uh, uh, identifying the areas which uh, uh, the uh, uh, process owners with the help of IT personnel, with the help of uh, our own uh, internal auditors, we uh, found out certain audit procedures which were highly repetitive in nature and uh, which was close to the audit observation. So that uh, uh, by uh, um, uh, by doing so, we came out with a laundry list of all those audit procedures which can actually be done using IDEA and which can actually save time. This uh, would then be used uh, by the uh, field auditors in their audits and uh, will come out with uh, uh, much more meaningful observations because uh, data analytics uh, being done by IDEA uh, would uh, leave out a lot of time uh, for them uh, to actually do the work which auditors uh, are asked to do. So the checking part. Uh, I believe that most of the auditors, whenever given a chance and the data would spend more time on uh, analytical procedures rather than, uh, you know, going to the field and uh, finding out the real issues. So here we found out that idea helped us in automating that bit of uh, audit, which is uh, into analytics. So data analytics was uh, being standardized. Uh, the audit procedures were being reframed and uh, the um, uh, the outcome, the output file uh, was getting uh, was getting uh, published to all the internal auditors who were who are doing field work uh, and uh, hence adding more quality uh, to the audit observations. So this was the uh, you know the main crux where we started off and uh, we got out into a lot of. Uh, 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 you know, uh, areas where we needed improvement. Uh, the following slides, I'll uh, explain that. Uh, the first and foremost thing which we needed to do uh, uh, in the reinvention model was to re-engineer our audit program. So no longer were we able to, uh, uh, you know, do the audit uh, uh, the same way, uh, given the size and the scale and uh, also during the pandemic uh, where uh, you know uh, field uh, auditors had limitations uh, so what we did is that the traditional on site audits uh, we are uh, transformed into something known as a uh, uh, you know the um, uh, data analytics tool model uh, remote uh, audit and uh, uh, something um, some sort of work uh, using uh, these uh, technology Technologies that were deployed by the functions. So, um, uh, rather than focusing just on the data analytics and the field work, which is a traditional approach of doing it, we rather uh, transformed it into uh, an audit program which contained the data analytics part, then uh, uh, connecting uh, through online platforms, then uh, a remote, remote sort of uh, control over the uh, tools that were deployed and. Uh, you know, uh, live streaming of certain uh, audit procedures that we did. So uh, the, by this way, what we did is that uh, uh, the total uh, audit program that was uh, for a particular location got transformed into some part which was uh, uh, a programmed audit uh, through IDEA and uh, uh, rest was for the on-site auditors. So this was uh, the, uh, uh, the first part that we had to do. Uh, second was uh, after um, having developed uh, an audit program, um, uh, re-engineered the audit program into something which was uh, uh, more amenable uh, and uh, uh, I would say uh, can be divided into a data analytics part and the uh, on-site job part. We had, uh, uh, we had uh, two major areas to focus. The first one was continuous control improvement uh, it's it's a, everybody knows this in the industry so uh, basically control uh, are all 
uh, in the system and uh, we need checks and balances uh, uh, to check whether those controls are still in place uh, everybody feels that if you have implemented sap then uh, you know you are uh, uh, you know controls are absolutely fine no need to worry about that was that is not the case i mean sap uh, is uh, a system which can be configured to the highest level you know so lot of lot of uh, you know areas uh, depends on configurations control how the control has been set into the system and these uh, controls and these configurations need continuous monitoring and we found out that uh, what was uh, earlier uh, setup as a initial setup uh, in sap uh, uh, got changed a lot of time and sometimes also um, uh, by unauthorized uh, you know a means or uh, uh, so to say not with proper authorization so continuous control improvement was one of the uh, areas where um, the program audit or the uh, uh, or the idea analytics helped us um, we have uh, developed a lot of script but i would like to uh, you know showcase some of the scripts on the uh, on the right hand side which uh, which was very helpful in uh, uh, in uh, uh, getting us uh, uh, this control uh, continuous control monitoring um, aspect into uh, into right perspective uh, the uh, active directory um, was churned so active directory uh, we found out that uh, many employees were uh, you know leaving the organization with uh, uh, which was still there in active directory and were misusing uh, you know uh, the um, uh, for their personal results then there were segregation of duties privilege access were given to someone then the opening closing uh, posting periods were being violated uh, one time vendor control uh, authorization group is not used so uh, and then duplicate control so uh, uh, when initially duplicate uh, uh, duplicate invoice check was uh, being configured in sap however uh, for various other uh, groups the duplicate control was removed so uh, these kind of uh, uh, areas was focused on in this continuous control monitoring setup and uh, uh, by the way all this uh, has been done entirely through idea because idea can take uh, uh, the um, uh, data with the use of smart exporter and can uh, very well churn these uh, uh, observations uh, uh, these data analytics into meaningful observations uh, 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 that is one aspect of uh, you know data analytics which we used uh, the second one was uh, continuous data assurance um these uh, in this part we focused on transactional data so uh, let's say procure to pay cycle um, where vendor master completeness uh, you know um, procurement uh, accuracy whether the procurement process has been followed or not uh, amendments to pos uh, cash payments then uh, in order to cash cycle billing delays uncertified work in payroll cycle attendance accuracy uh, monthly uh, you know employee master accuracy so these uh, kind of uh, data um, analytics uh, were built into and uh, uh, so many else uh, you know uh, uh, we developed a lot of uh, continuous equations there are a uh, lot of conversion uh, tables that is required in the uh, uh, in the epc space whereby a square meter is converted into uh, you know uh, let's say uh, cubic meters and uh, uh, you know measures of uh, other measures uh, converted into uh, square feet so sometimes uh, there were inaccuracies in uh, that aspect also and uh, labor uh, payments were made uh, accordingly uh, erroneous so uh, these kind of uh, continuous data assurance uh, model was the second uh, you know bucket of uh, uh, analytics uh, that we we were able to do uh, in uh, this particular aspect uh, one uh, step further we went uh, in a case of vendor master uh, so uh, when vendor master is developed in sap it uh, captures certain uh, fields which are basically um, uh, need to be entered by the person who is creating a vendor code however um, what he uh, does not do is that he does not capture the entire thing he captures the relevant fields which are mandatory or which are which he feels uh, you know is essential for creating a vendor code there are a whole lot of data which is uh, going into the uh, attachments to the vendor code these are supporting documents like uh, you know um, your kyc document your pan card number your aadhar card number your um, uh, your um, uh, you know entity registration certificates gst registration certificates 
these uh, documents contain um, you know some set of data which is uh, somehow not uh, uh, you know entered into the system we used idea to find out these sets of data and to make a meaningful vendor master and it through a completely different kind of a set of data which we analyzed uh, let's say uh, you know we found uh, instances where uh, you know a partnership firm uh, had a vendor code and uh, uh, the one of the partners has also registered with us as a proprietor so this kind of uh, information um, uh, led uh, led uh, the audit team to focus more on more on these vendors and we actually found out that uh, you know they were um, uh, using uh, their uh, um, uh, you know relationship within the firm and the proprietary concern to siphon off uh, you know amounts from the company at a higher cost so one of the vendor was at uh, was uh, giving the services at a lower cost whereas the other one was uh, um, uh, providing the same services at a uh, higher cost so these kind of observations um, uh, was uh, uh, we were able to do using continuous uh, data assurance uh, model uh, within uh, the entire gamut of data analytics uh, second uh, uh, secondly uh, uh, what we did uh, is that uh, as i mentioned that all the functions were asked to uh, were asked to digitize their uh, respective operations so what happened is that all these operations they tried uh, to use uh, technology and uh, tried to gather certain data like waybridge so waybridge which was uh, you know operating on a static model uh, had to digitize its uh, data and um, and started saving in uh, saving all the data into one uh, uh, file uh, then uh, the gps tracker that was on uh, machineries and equipments were um, the data started uh, uh, being uh, uh, kept into um, uh, one software vendor and uh, it was then uh, brought into uh, uh, a meaningful format uh, the tablet uh, which was used to uh, record the receipt uh, was also uh, throwing in a lot of data the operating plants you know the batching plant and a concrete uh, making plant so all these plants were also um, uh, giving a lot of data and uh, uh, earlier when it was not being stored in a machine readable format was now being stored then there was a fuel level checker uh, which is which got digitized then the cctv cameras uh, the locations etc all this information uh, started uh, uh, getting stored into uh, into some sort of a digitized format however since this was not connected with sap Uh, what we did is that we thought of connecting it through idea so we got all this uh, you know sort of data and developed a, uh, a gamut of information in idea which we could compare with sap and then find out really uh, uh, you know interesting uh, issues like uh, for instance uh, receipts bypassing stores so um, when uh, when we studied the waybridge data and compared with sap we found out that many of the loads of uh, materials was going directly to the uh, um, to the site location and bypassing the stores then um, fuel being issued to a scrap machinery then uh, material shortage is not being recorded uh, under utilized hired machineries so all this was possible then fuel efficiency and theft by uh, using the data of fuel level checker then uh, non monitored entry exits uh, using the cctv camera uh, location uh, locational information uh, so uh, this was possible when uh, we tried to match the data uh, which was thrown by these uh, unconnected uh, so to say um, databases which uh, with the accounting database uh, going forward uh, we had a unique problem with the uh, with our uh, toll business so we are having like uh, four uh, toll plazas which we manage and the challenge here was the humongous data uh, so um, one uh, toll gate manages like a 10 to uh, 20 gb of data uh, uh, for analysis that was not possible uh, for analysis in excel or uh, you know any other format uh, in idea that was uh, very easy and uh, and with uh, with uh, uh, the 
new age uh, fast tag being implemented across india lot of data was also getting collected from the uh, government website the ncpi national payments corporation of india and uh, when we analyzed this uh, huge data into idea we came out with uh, you know some some different observations which was a really um, uh, which was really uh, very less when we uh, had we not used idea um, what happened is that we used to uh select a sample and for that sample we used to perform these kind of uh, analytics and then uh, used to present it to the uh, to the audit committee however the entire uh, gamut of transaction the entire load of transaction was not checked however with uh, uh, with idea this was possible so toll management system uh, uh, would flow the data uh, can be taken from the toll management system then compared with uh, fast tag data and uh, uh, we came out with lot of observations and lot of uh, improvements in our processes um, to give you some examples we found out that uh, you know the same vehicle was charged to a toll at uh, at a different rates so uh, when it passes through toll plaza number 1 it was charged let's say 50 rupees the other toll at uh, toll gate number 2 was charging like uh, 100 rupees and then uh, 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 we got uh, you know into unauthorized toll exemptions then fast tags not matching vehicle type all these kind of observations at the entire uh, uh, you know uh, 100% data was possible earlier this was being done on the sample basis and management was not uh, able to uh, get a sense of uh, you know how much uh, kind of uh, amount we are talking about so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this was the uh, Um, the turning point uh, when uh, the big data uh, was also been uh, churned by uh, the uh, audit software uh, going forward into uh, fraud analytics uh, in uh, in our uh, uh, injection industry uh, the uh, uh, being a dispersed uh, locational uh, sort of a setup where uh, decentralization is uh, more required uh, for uh, any uh, you know company to operate decentralization comes at a cost i mean most of the decentralized uh, uh, operations or activities uh, uh, have a, uh, so to say uh, the uh, urge uh, for the site uh, or uh, rather a temptation uh, to get into fraud so uh, um and uh, there was uh, our field team used to get all red flags you know so red flags uh, about uh, you know uh, vendors uh, working along with the employees then uh, uh, vendors uh, among themselves being related part pass through schemes fictitious payment shell companies but these were merely red flags you know and uh, and uh, isolated in, uh, instances were uh, were being getting uh, uh, you know our attention then we used to do a field audit and we used to uh, really get into the uh, data and uh, try to find out uh, who uh, who is the ultimate responsible person and uh, we uh, used to uh, um, uh, show some uh, uh, investigation reports however these were isolated instances we needed something upfront we needed something uh, which uh, uh, which the data can show us you know and uh, we were no longer uh, being working on uh, you know these uh, field auditors uh, tips so uh, so we wanted uh, to develop an analytics a data analytics sort of an environment where we can uh, find out proactively uh, the areas to focus on during our audits and we uh, what we did is that we uh, created a data warehouse uh, where uh, the relevant information the meaningful information which we found out from field audits or earlier investigations uh, uh, we uh, uh, actually curled out that information from sap systems from these non sap uh, you know system environments like hrms like uh, waybridge like uh, operational plants uh, etc and then uh, some sort of external data which was available uh, and we created a data warehouse and from that data warehouse we try to uh, fit in our uh, um, uh, fraud schemes that we identified earlier so uh, we listed all the uh, schemes of frauds and uh, you know how uh, the fraudster uh, used the system or where he can 
uh, he had created a, a fraud indicator. So uh, that we had listed into a, a, a fraud list, a fraud scheme list. And from the fraud scheme list, uh, for each scheme, we had uh, uh, developed, uh, so to say, uh, steps or let's say a pattern which uh, which would uh, which uh, as an auditor we could uh, really zero in. So that pattern uh, was stored uh, by each uh, against each scheme, and uh, and uh, once the pattern uh, in the pattern we found out that uh, if we had let's say ten uh, uh, different activities or ten different uh, uh, so to say uh, uh, patterns or uh, trends. And from these trends, one or two or three uh, trends were actually uh, indicating of a fraud. We said that these were fraud indicators. So once we established the fraud, fraud indicators and we had the entire data developed, we, uh, uh, we developed, uh, uh, we used to hand it over to the field team uh, so that they would investigate further and uh, would close the audit. Um, and it was an interesting thing. We found out. Uh, a lot of uh, issues, but I would like to focus on three main uh, points which uh, um, which uh, we uh, developed. The first was uh, conflicting relationships. So um, wherever we found, uh, you know, there was a pattern of uh, you know matching name, contact uh, details, address, etc., uh, and uh, that matched also with a particular employee. And this was not on the basis of the data that was recorded in the employee or the vendor master. It was something else. The vendor master details and employee master details per se did not throw any of the conflicting relationships. However, as I mentioned earlier, there were these supporting documents uh, which contained a different set of data which was not getting captured in vendor master or the employee master. We brought the, that kind of data into the, uh, into the uh, data warehouse and then we started matching and we found really, really out of the roof, uh, you know, kind of uh, and startling observations, you know, like uh, the contact name, uh, the name, the contact details uh, of one of the vendors um, lying in uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the comparative statement of another vendor. So the comparative statement and the uh, method of compar comparison for rate uh, discovery or price discovery went for a toss. So this kind of uh, details was possible when we analyzed the uh, data, which is not being stored in the, uh, in the uh, database system. Second kind of uh, fraud analytics, which we developed was the preferred vendor or let's say uh, pass through sort of a scheme. Here we, uh, we found out that um, uh, these uh, five to six list uh, below like frequency of orders per supplier, then uh, linking of the buyer, buyer as in the person in the purchase department who buys the goods, okay, who orders the goods. So linking the buyer with the orders released, then uh, having uh, for the same set of uh, vendors, whether there are expedited payments, the number of uh, urgent purchases that were made, then the invoices that were just below the authorization limit. Then uh, unusual delivery times, you know, like uh, the delivery times was, uh, let's say, end of the month. However, uh, delayed delivery was okay with the with the uh, with the uh, with the buyer. So these four or five, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, issues, if uh, they get ticked with a particular vendor, then we zero in in with that vendor and that particular buyer in the purchase department, and we try to find out. You know whether uh, those uh, you know have an excess. So this kind of uh, preferred vendor uh, then became uh, you know known to us, and that uh, we used to do earlier based on uh, you know limited information or let's say tips. However, uh, with uh, data analytics, we were able to find out um, how many other vendors are lying in the uh, in the domain. Uh, then uh, the last one, uh, which we were uh, successfully able to complete was this fictitious payment or shell company. Uh, and here also we had, a, uh, we had identified, uh, you know, a laundry list of patterns, some of which we have listed like goods paid, not in inventory, then vendor master missing details. Like uh, in one of the cases we found only the PO number was mentioned, you know, and uh, the entire thing was blank. Then service code not specified in the vendor invoices. 
and then uh, there was missing supporting documents so all these uh, uh, together um, uh, we found out is this pattern is this uh, you know um, uh, check uh, checkpoints valid uh, for uh, most of the uh, uh, you know studies that we conducted and we found out that uh, there were many more uh, 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 patterns uh, which were adding to this so once you study on the pattern and you develop a particular script and you uh, study it together then you can zero in on a particular uh, uh, fraud analytics um, you know uh, kind of angle so this was done to support uh, the audit function and uh, uh, going forward the idea is that once the audit function uh, uses it into the audit and uh, establishes it as a uh, as a meaningful observation or a meaningful uh, you know process improvement point and we have the buy in of the uh, of the process owner then we had decided to go a little further we uh, we have uh, issued like uh, about uh, 10 to 15 uh, scripts which uh, no longer requires any auditor's intervention uh, so it uh, so it is completely automated uh, churns out the data from sap uh, the script runs idea runs the script and then that is uh, directly emailed uh, to the audit team. So these kind of uh, scripts, once getting established during the audit process and agreed by the auditor, uh, agreed by the auditee or the process owner, would then become a completely automated uh, kind of a, um, uh, audit analytic. So uh, what, what we started off by helping the audit department in their function, uh, and the and our internal auditors or feed auditors to save their time is slowly and steadily uh, becoming an automated uh, audit procedure or an automated script or an automated observation which uh, which addresses the uh, the exact root cause since many of those observations which i had mentioned the configuration issues in the systems get arrested right away because uh, once, uh, uh, if you go at the configuration level and tell uh, the process owners that, boss, if you uh, uh, make this configuration right, or if you, uh, you know, build in the right of uh, right uh, type of control in SAP or the standard control in SAP, then uh, they are uh, convinced that uh, once we plug this, then uh, you know the system uh, would perform well. And this is where uh, most of our uh, uh, you know observations are going as speak and uh, uh, many of the process owners have also told us that uh, you know why don't you ask for something like this for us i mean you hand over the scripts and uh, we will uh, you know internally run it and we'll um, uh, will uh, ensure that uh, your observations are closed as early as possible so this was the uh, the end result of our exercise it is a long way to go um, however uh, we have uh, started on the journey and uh, hope it will uh, come that's it jairam from my side rose i think uh, a very very exciting engaging insightful presentation thank you rose from the slides which you made on uh, your tollway experience, uh, fraud analytics, the scripts which you prepared in uh, under CCM and CDA. I think a lot of effort, a lot of diligent effort has gone in from both your side and the team side. And one point which came out very nicely in your presentation, in fact, two points for me is with the help of data analytics, repetitive analytics, continuous auditing, you have been able to free up time to do a lot of thinking work in the internal audit function, which is something which is very critical to internal audit nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful. Number two, what I really liked is where you talked about a lot of the low hanging fruits, the low hanging analytics being transformed to the line function where they could build it into SAP. And that is the value addition you've added because that build within SAP has come because you developed the script. Yes. You know, you all said as internal auditors that we don't need to monitor this any longer and you all passed on 
that transform that knowledge, that analytic experience to the first line of defense, and they were able to build it. So, I think it was a fantastic presentation. Your Tollway analytics brought out very good memories for me because uh, I've also done some fantastic Tollway analytics, and you know where you talked about uh, uh, a particular toll operator giving maximum exemptions. The same toll operator user ID being operated in different lanes, uh, same vehicle, different uh, charge. I think it's 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 a really perfect environment for used for us to use idea because you cannot use Excel there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So so very good points, Rose. Uh, Rose, I am going to take a couple of uh, questions uh, uh, and comments from the chat. And then we'll also ask members if they would like to uh, raise any further questions. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Prusti. Uh, Mr. Prusti is an auditor for a very large uh, public sector undertaking, so he's joined in to understand, uh, you know, uh, raise some questions and also learn from us. Uh, in very large companies, Rose, where SAP is the backbone, uh, what role do service codes play? uh with regard to material management i mean are there multiple service codes applicable to material i, I think service codes would apply to service contracts right present yeah yeah so uh, service contracts are basically contracts which are giving given to labor contractors or uh, you know some composite orders also which involve material and services both Right. So service codes are basically created in SAP right. and uh, these service codes are uh, sometimes of generic, uh, you know, generic in nature. Yes. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, the apt is that uh, whenever uh, uh, the vendor submits his invoice or, uh, you know, the copies of uh, work done, mm -hmm. then those service codes ideally uh, need to be mapped. Now, sometimes what happens is that these service codes are, uh, you know, um, uh, too generic in nature to identify which area of work right. uh, you know the audit uh, the contractor is yes. doing yes. and uh, and that is where uh, we try to find out the pattern like um, uh, how how many of those contractors are actually using this generic service yes. codes yes. and uh, uh, you know trying to misuse or trying to uh, you know uh, use the lacuna of the system right. uh, uh, to uh, uh, you know to get into the company uh, invoice which uh, for the work which he may or may not have actually done. Correct. Good one. Good one, Rose. Good points. Uh, uh, Rose, a lot of good compliments coming from Mr. Venkatesh Kamath, again from Mr. Prusti. Uh, you, this recording of the session, Mr. Prusti, will be available on the SAMA YouTube channel tomorrow morning. So you would be able to track the recording there. Uh, Rose, I don't see any further questions. A uh, lot of compliments coming in for your slides and your articulation uh, i have one question from my end before yeah. we wind up and i give you a vote of thanks yeah. uh, where do you see this function of data analytics and continuous auditing uh, transforming into in 2020 to 23 if i were to just ask you maybe one or two salient uh, items on your wish list which you would like in terms of continuous auditing for 20 to 23, what would they be? Yeah, uh, so uh, the couple of things, points uh, which uh, I have thought and, uh, you know, maybe uh, many of, uh, you know, people would agree is that there is a lot of information which is lying, uh, you know, uh, within the system. And uh, many of the functions and uh, the divisions are, uh, although they have, uh, you know, they know, you know, where things are going wrong, but they really don't have the bandwidth or the real mindset to actually look at the data, how the internal auditor perceives it, you know. So, uh, and uh, and even if they were uh, given the, you know, the budgets or so to say the liberty to do data analytics, they would not be able to use that tool to the right effect. Yes. yes. So, in, uh, uh, so in one sense, what I see is that in 20 to 23, the internal auditors, can use this data analytics, the huge amount of data, and try to find out certain meaningful, uh, you know, insights. And um, and rather than uh, you know wasting time or spending more time on uh, on uh, analytics, 
uh, and uh, the uh, you know issues that can be really addressed only through data analytics can be done directly uh, through idea or through uh, you know uh, a dashboarding portal right. and then uh, can be showcased to the management and uh, most of the managements now are interested in uh, you know this kind of a product right. and we right. try to develop that uh, so um, with the help of uh, you know even um, uh, uh, you know, case where or sure. uh, so to say, idea team in Germany, we tried uh, to uh, do an automated, a fully automated yeah. model, yeah. whereby uh, the dashboard gets published every uh, yeah. month, let's say, you know, and uh, whatever we have agreed with the management, the management knows about the issue. It just needs to study the trend and uh, get, uh, uh, you know, hang Absolutely. of it and uh, put it to rest. So that was, uh, you know, the one area. The second uh, uh, most important thing is that what I believe is that uh, the uh, data that is lying, uh, you know, uh, in other systems other mm. than SAP or, mm. uh, you know, let's say uh, in uh, uh, certain uh, technologies, the latest mm. technologies that uh, mm. we are using, the data is there, only it is not captured in a particular mm. format mm. or in a particular, uh, uh, you know, so to say yes. database. Uh, there, uh, uh, once it is captured in a particular database, then uh, idea can really work wonders or any data analytics tool for that matter or dashboarding tool can really work wonders. Okay. And uh, from here, for internal auditors, data analytics uh, is the norm because most of the functions or the processes or the companies are investing heavily into data analytics. Yeah. And if internal audit function doesn't use it, then, uh, you know, would be redundant and out of uh, business soon. A very good thought you left us with, Rose. Rose, I wanted to convey a formal vote of thanks on behalf of our company. And uh, Deep Ji, sir, Maniji, uh, we've really enjoyed your session. A wonderful insights, a lot of efforts taken by you to give us very relevant use cases. Thank you for being with us this evening, Rose. Thank you, Jairam. And we look forward to having you with us in future sessions also. And thank you all the members who took our time to attend today's session. We value your patronage and look forward to seeing you in the next Wednesday webinar series. Wish everyone a wonderful evening ahead. And for our members from out of India, have a wonderful day. Rose, thank you. And thank you. Look Thanks. forward to being in touch. Thank you, everyone.